darkness is a fearful thing. Fearful from lack of knowledge of its content, its purpose. What does the darkness contain? Why does it exist? Is it harmful? Is it beneficial? Is it to be feared? Listen. A police car speeds through a haunted night. A passing shower has left the pavement slick with rain and scudding wraithful clouds become ominous shapes in the light of a slivered moon. The darkness pierced only by the lance-like beams of the car's headlights and the almost plopping sound of the rotating red eye mounted on its top. There's been an accident, some cause for alarm. Help has been requested by an unknown caller. The police have summoned a doctor on emergency duty, and now he and the policeman respond to the call. Uh, hang on, Doc. We're almost there. Great. It's really a rotten night to be hurtling around in a police car. I haven't seen another car for miles. Uh, I probably won't out here. <laughs> All I use in this neighborhood is horses. <laughs> I guess we wonder this place is still standing. It sure run down. It sure looks that way in the dark. Hey, watch over that long Two men stepped oh, yeah. from the automobile, oh. shoes crunching yeah, on the gravel, leaves that lay on the ground around them. And as they walked, they tried to joke with one another to lighten the mood. But we didn't come all this way for a crank. Look out for that strap. It's loose. Oh. Approaching the steps of the desperate-looking house, an eerie feeling began to overcome both of them. A feeling of apprehension that all was not right. It was so dark. So very, very dark. No, I'll knock. Uh, try again. There doesn't seem to be anybody around. No, I'll try the door. That's ah, open. Huh? Let's go in. Okay. Cautiously, they entered the Rome Chapel House, clothed in the deepest, blackest night of the year. The beam of the flashlight crashed from corner to corner, disrupting the dust that lay there undisturbed for years, it seemed. Small, scurrying sounds in the walls spoke for the rodent occupants, and a flitting shadow made them duck their heads. Oh, bats. What a creepy place. <laughs> yeah, this is. I know what you mean. Oh. Doesn't seem to be anyone here. Hello? Hello? Oh, what in God's name is that? I came from the next room. But, oh! Are you all right? Oh, what, what happened? Where's, where's the lights? Oh, I just fell over a chair. It busted my flashlight. Well, strike a match or something. There, there's someone in this room. Mm. There, in the corner. An old woman. Wait a minute. Ow! I burned my fingers. Oh, strike another one quickly. There. Oh, wait a minute. There's a, there's a lamp over there. A kerosene lamp. Maybe if I could... Kind of, well, check, check and see if there's any fuel. Yeah, well... Yeah, yeah, there's fuel in it. Wait a minute, let me light it. Ah. Ah, there. At least that's a little bit better than the dark. Now bring that thing over here to look at her. Hey, I know that woman. She, she used to live in town a couple of years ago. Kids used to call her a, a witch. Seems she uh, she had a kid, uh, a young man. Should be about 25. They, they moved from town a couple of years ago and then dropped completely out of sight. I haven't seen her since... Uh, well, aside be... from the fact that she's very old, there, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with her. Did you call us out here, old woman? Hey, what do you think we ought to do? I suppose we ought to take her back to the hospital for examination. If, if there's nothing wrong, they'll release her in the morning and uh, no harm done. I... There must be something wrong with her. Maybe a neighbor called in. I, I feel we ought to take her. I don't know. She's shaking her head no, Doc. Oh, what, what is it, old woman? Can, can you talk to me? Can you tell me what's wrong? I, I tell you, we ought to take her back to the hospital. She's pointing to that room over there, Doc. That, that door over there. Is there something behind that door, old woman? Is there something behind that door that we should know about? Yeah, I think we ought to take a look before we do anything else, Doc. Maybe your kid is having a, a fit or something. Maybe, maybe he's hurt. That, that, is, is that it, old woman? Is, is your boy behind that door? Is your boy behind that door? 
policeman left the woman's side and crossed the room to try the door. It's locked. Crude yellow glow from the kerosene lantern cast lurid shadows on the wall of the filthy room. The movements of the policeman and the doctor appeared as huge caricatures of themselves on the surrounding enclosure. The old crone sat in the corner chuckling insanely to herself as the two men puzzled out the meaning of the mystery they had stumbled onto. Even the flickering, meager light from the lantern across the room could not hide the fear that showed in each other's eyes. Could not quench the burning curiosity as to what lay behind the door. Could not dispel the feeling of anxiety as they approached the door together. The old woman, dimly lit in the corner of the room, showed her yellowed teeth in a grotesque grin as they moved from her and made not a sound as they touched the handle of the door. They're locked, huh? I suppose we'll have to break it in. Now, stand back. Let me put my shoulder to it. Ah, there. Wait a minute, let me reach in and unlock it from the inside. Open? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Putrid light the kerosene lantern threw was all but swallowed up by the immense darkness of the room as the smashed door swung back on its hinges. The men peered into the room, trying to divine its contents, all to no avail. Apprehensively, the doctor turned on his heel and strode across the room to where the old woman was sitting, crouched near hissed through fear-clenched teeth. Is it in there? Is that where you want us to go? <laughs> For the first time, the old crone made some visible motion. An arm upraised from the billows of filthy cloth that surrounded it. A gnarled hand with prominent blue veins close to the surface of yellow parchment skin appeared. And a crooked misshapen finger pointed with broken, filthy nails at the door. Whatever it is we're here for, it's in that room. Hey, I don't like it, Doc. I, I don't like the looks of this. I'm, I'm going to call for help. I'm going to go out to the car radio for help. I'll... Don't be a fool. Whatever's in there may be in trouble. Whatever's in there, we may already be too late. Or, oh, too early. The doctor covered his fear with patient resolve and sweeping up the lantern strode viciously across the room, beckoning the policeman to follow him. He stopped at the door and swinging the lantern heavily in his hand, hesitated a moment, and then thrust it into the room. His motion caused the lamp to swing high, and the full impact of even that feeble flame caused them to blink for a moment, readjust their eyes again to the gloom. Shading his eyes against the glare, the lantern held high. The doctor swept the room with his glance. I don't see anything. This is foolish. Let, let's take the old Wait. woman. Wait! Wait. What is it? Quiet. There. In the corner. What? Uh, my God. My, my God. Uh, uh, uh. What, what, the, what the hell is that? What kind of a place is this? The two horror-stricken men stared at the mass in the far corner of the room. A glutinous shape that defied the imagination. An indescribable horror of flesh that made them recoil in terror. Get a hold of yourself. I'm going to take a closer Doc, look. Don't touch it. Don't touch Shut it. Shut up, you idiot. Uh, what the hell is this? You won't believe this. 
It's a man. A man turned inside out. The shapeless Hulk lay in the corner. And in the light of the lantern, dim as it was, some form could be distinguished. It moved, Aggie. It moved. It's alive. My God. A man turned inside out. It's still alive. Look at it. Uh, yeah. Look at it, you uh, fool. Uh, the skin is the inside, and the raw sinews and flesh are the outside. All the organs exposed. The eyes inside out. Not kill it. Do something. Put it away. It's moving. Kill it back. My God, it's moving. It's trying to get to... Oh, hold that ladder higher. There. There's a door. Another door in the corner of the room. It's trying to get there. I'm going to open it. Doc, don't stay away from that door. Let me call for help. I'm, I'm going, going to open to that go. door. Whatever, whoever did this is, is probably hiding in there. Hold the lantern higher. What? 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 What do you see? Nothing. Nothing but darkness. Darkness. Bring the lantern here. Doc, Doc, uh, uh, I'm scared. Bring the lantern I... here, you fool. And hurry. Hold it high so I can see. The man crossed the room with the light and held it high to gain its fullest light. The two men stood silently for a moment, listening, hearing only one another breathing, and the mumbling sounds of the creature in the corner. The light. If the light doesn't penetrate it, it doesn't cut the darkness at all. It's almost a solid wall of, of darkness. Look, you can almost feel don't, it. Don't, don't reach in there. Nothing. The police Doc. had reached up and grabbed the doctor's outstretched arm and pulled it down. The doctor had put out his hand to explore the depth of the room and the policeman stopped him. Cut it out, you idiot. Don't put your hand in there. Can't you see how the light doesn't get in there at all? It, it's, it's like a, a solid wall. Come on, let's, let's get out of here. He tugged at the doctor's arm to draw him away from the door. The man resisted, his curiosity overcoming his fear of the unknown, of the darkness. Oh, my arm. I, I gotta find out. Look. Look at the floor. Oh, my God. It's... It's creeping out. The, the darkness is... It's creeping out of the room. It's... It's almost... It's almost like it's leaking. The darkness had begun to creep out of the room like a rivulet of sweat that runs down your back. The small tentacles of darkness now extended themselves across the floor of the room, reaching out for the two men where they stood. Shut the door quickly. Shut that door on the thing. Now let's get let's get out of here. Let's let's go and call for help and get away from this place. What about this okay. thing in the corner? There's nothing you can do for him. The woman. Stop! You the woman! You stop! <laughs> The old crone had crept quietly behind him, not making a sound all the while. They stood at the door of the closet, staring at the inky mass. And now, as they moved toward the door of the room, she threw open the door of the closet that trapped the darkness behind it and unleashed it in the small room. She's opened the door. Look it out. Stand back. I've got my revolver. I won't do any good. Look. It's coming out. It's gathering around her legs. It's crawling around her body. I, I can't work. Two men stood horror-stricken, fear making their hearts pound. Their throats constricted with dryness and the sour taste of terror filled their mouths as they watched the heavy black mass undulate out of the closet and snake around the old woman's body. It crept around her waist. His small fingers like vines shot up to trap her arms to her side. With smoke-like ghostliness, it moved round her shoulders and clutched at her head, smothering her insane laughter that greeted this creature of evil. There was silence for a moment. The darkness wreathed itself around the form of the woman, masking all shape human configuration in a billowing mass of darkness. And then... Inside out. It, it turned her 
inside out. Uh. Come on, man. Get up. Get up. We've got to get out of here. Get up. The man was overcome by the sight of the old woman's hideous change. He fell to the floor prostrate with fear. I can't lift him. He's too heavy. Wake up. Damn it. Wake up. I can't run here. It's moving closer to us now. I I gotta try and lift it. It's got my legs. My feet. Darkness had crept across the floor of the room, ensnaring the doctor in his struggles to lift his comrade. It reached for his feet and legs, and struggle as he might, he couldn't rid himself of its hold. Get loose! Get get loose! Let's try for the door. Try to crawl. He moved from the form of a fallen companion and tried to struggle to the door. No. No. There seemed to be some success. He was able to move his legs, and then he knew why. The darkness was preoccupied with his friend. Again, he watched in fascinated terror as the hissing, slithering, bilious mass crept over the prostrate form there on the floor. Again, he watched as the resolution of human form disintegrated before his eyes. All thoughts of escape left his mind as he watched terror-stricken knowing what was coming, unable to tear his eyes away. The wraithful black ether that gathered itself in one humping mass. And then... Quickly coming to his senses, the doctor summoned his courage from a human reservoir untapped save for times like these and made for the door. A tentacle of doctor shot off from the mask, gathered itself around his knees and brought him crashing to the floor. Ah! You got me! Got to get away. Got to get away from it. And smother me. Smother me. Turn me inside out. My legs. My heart. Why do you fall? Fight. Fight. It's only smoke. It's only smoke. Fight. I do break free. Got to break free. Got to get away. Got to. My head. My eyes. I can't see. My mouth. It's coming my mouth. The darkness surrounds us all. Unfathomable darkness that absorbs you like a shroud. It clothes you like fine cloth, clinging to you, resolving itself to human form, taking you to its bosom. bosom, bosom. Friendly darkness. Tentacles of darkness. Dark, 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 dark.